Recruiting season is in full swing, my friends. It is a season of late nights of SQL reviews, lead codes, and trying to remember what exactly Bayes is. But before we do any of those things, we first have to land the interview, which some would argue, myself included, the hardest part of the entire application process. And the single most important thing in landing that interview is the resume. I've been popping my resume here and there, so today I'm finally going to sit down and go through in detail the resume that got me my current position as an entry-level FANG data scientist. I'm the kind of person that's pretty hard on myself, so you won't hear me say this often, but I'm actually quite proud of this resume. It's the result of countless iterations and many, many, many hours of work. Be warned though, it's still not perfect, and it still has a pretty big but not super obvious error in it that I'll point out later on. Now, let's go through this item by item, line by line. My resume is one page long and very ATS friendly. As you can see, it's also very conducive to cramming it in there as much as possible. Header. Here we have my name and email, phone number, and address. These are clearly not my real phone number and address, but it is my real name and email. It's separated by simple bars. Some people say that having the address is pretty old fashioned um, these days since nobody is actually going to mail you anything except for like the spam people and the government. But as my friend and fellow YouTuber Kenji pointed out, it's still really good to include the city that you're in so the company will know if they need to fly you in or not. You can also put in your GitHub and LinkedIn, but I personally chose not to because I noticed that applications ask you to put in your GitHub and LinkedIn anyway. Education and honors. So honors used to be spelled H-O-N-O-U-R-S because I am Canadian and I still abide by the laws of Her Majesty the Queen of England. But now I spell it without the U to show that I have truly assimilated into the American culture. I was doing my master's at the University of Pennsylvania, and here's a pro tip. If your program has a bit of a convoluted name like mine, which is Master's of Computer and Information Technology, just put down what it's closest to, which here in my case is computer science, and then put the actual name or acronym in parentheses. I actually started doing this after I've gotten questions from recruiters asking me what exactly my program is. Another thing that is useful is to list out all the classes that you took in that program that are relevant to the job. Data science statistics was a funny one, actually. I swear I wasn't going to graduate because that class was intended for people with a very strong math background. For context, I've done like two intro calculus classes, a couple statistics classes for science people, and an intro to screen math and probability class. I didn't even do linear algebra, so this class was incredibly hard. Anyways, I also listed out my undergrad degree in pharmacology and the scholarships and honors that I received. This section actually evolved from me just listing out the names of the scholarships until I realized that nobody actually knew what it was for. So I, now I put the dollar amount and why I received it. Professional experience is the meat of the resume. It's also where I spend the most time iterating and perfecting it to get to where it is now. First item is Goldman Sachs. So right off the bat, I'm gonna mention something that I did that looking back, I probably wouldn't do now. The title of my internship was actually Technology Summer Analyst, since this resume was specific to the FANG data science position. I tweaked the title um, to something that related more to what I actually did at a company, since most technology summer analyst positions are for software engineering. I have a whole video talking about how I got in as a software engineer and just asked to work on data science, which I'll link above. I thought that changing the title would emphasize more the fact that I was doing data science and machine learning, but I think that might have come off honestly as a little bit too try hard and just like a tiny bit deceptive. If I were to do this again, I would just leave it as technology summer analyst and trust that whoever is reading my resume will figure out what I actually did based on the bullet points. In this internship, I worked on data science and machine learning. The high level overview was that banks needed to maintain a certain amount of liquidity or cash on hand at all times per regulations. And the task that I was given was to figure out a way to do anomaly detection so that we could be alerted or better yet preemptively know when we might not have enough liquidity or too much liquidity. This way, we can make better preparations and be faster to act when we know that the amount of liquidity is going to change. So following the structure I always talk about, first bullet point is overview of what I did, second bullet point is the technical stuff, and the final bullet point is the impact. The final product of what I did was used unsupervised machine learning algorithms on time series data for anomaly detection that reduced processing time. That was a mouthful. So the technical stuff is that I first had to get my data using Scala and wrangle it, etc. And the way that I showed it was impactful is that the results were interesting enough that I was asked to write an executive summary about it and present it to senior leadership. So my bullet points follow the structure of overview, technical, and impact. But what I did to elevate it even more was to stick in more quantifiable impact wherever I could. For example, reduced process time by 20% and 500 plus end clients. And of course, the last line was all about impact in terms of the executive summary and presenting it. 
there's three lines here, but there's actually way more going on in terms of keywords and showing and not just telling that I was working with big data. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because the video would literally be like 30 minutes long. So I'm gonna make a separate video that goes into all the details on how I turned this not so good resume into my current resume. So make sure to turn on the notifications buttons so you don't miss that out when it comes out. Anyways, returning to this specific entry, this internship was the star of my resume and I milked it as much as I could. My other work experience is a research position at the Ontario Institute of Cancer Research, which is a cancer research center near the University of Toronto where I did my undergrad. I took on this full-time research position after graduating and finally accepting that I wasn't going to be a doctor because A, I hated all the doctor activities during my several clinical volunteering positions, and B, I would have been a terrible doctor, probably largely because I would have hated it. Anyways, so for this position, I wrote junior data scientist here to desperately emphasize that it was a data science position. Looking back now, I probably would have just put research assistant because that was the proper title of my job. I actually had quite a few different research positions, but this was the most data science-y one, the most recent one, lasted the longest, and actually had something published by the time of me writing this resume. Before I got my internship at Goldman Sachs, this was the star of my resume, and I milked it much harder. But in this version, I simplified things to just get a brief overview of what I did, which was discovering three new cancer mutations using Python and R. I also put in two publications, one of which was still in preparation and the other that was published. If you're still in early stage and are trying to get your first internship, you also want to stay tuned for my other video, where I'll be going through the resume that got me my Goldman Sachs and Amazon internship offers. And in that resume, this experience was featured a lot more. Skills. This is just a summary of all the different keywords I sprinkled throughout my resume, as well as others that I couldn't manage to casually incorporate. I organized it by programming language, big data, machine learning, and data science and miscellaneous technologies, where in the last one, I just kind of threw in everything else. I use big data here because I wanted to stick that keyword in my resume. Looking back now though, I probably will organize it a little bit differently, but I think this is fine the way it is here too. Final section is projects and leadership. This is where I show all the other impactful things I've done and also keep emphasizing that I don't just sit in a corner and code by myself all day, which may or may not be true, but oh well. <laughs> First entry is teaching assistant. Not so much to say here. Uh, I was a teaching assistant for a math class and I work with other TAs and the instructor to do TA things. Clearly I had to work with other people so I must be somewhat sociable um, is what I'm trying to convey here. I stuck in some qualifications here, but it's honestly a bit of an overkill to be honest. Probably would have just left out the 60 plus students now. Co-founder and business lead for Tally. So <laughs> this is my failed startup that I tried to package it up and show that despite the fact that it failed, it wasn't a complete failure and I had to have had some communication, teamwork and leadership skills. Okay, so I was part of the accelerator program at the University of Toronto, and a few of us wanted to build a platform to help students with autism and ADHD by digitizing this behavioral therapy that helps these students do better in school. I was mostly in charge of the talking part, um, and by the end of the accelerator program, I definitely improved a lot in my talking skills. I pitched weekly and convinced the private therapy provider to agree to give us money for the product if we managed to build it, which we didn't. But in general, this was a really fun experience, although I did lack a lot of management skills. My teammates were focused on building a good product and it was really on me to do the product management and stuff, but I really just focused on talking to people and didn't actually make sure that we had a great product in the end. Long story short, it failed and I learned a lot from my shortcomings that I've been trying to improve on since. Next entry is president of Tech Explorer at the University of Toronto. This was a university club aimed to teach technical skills to people outside of computer science and engineering. So it's pretty funny because I was actually the only non-engineering student on the exact team, and I was definitely learning these skills that were being taught too. I started off as vice president and then became co-president at the end. I kind of patched this up a little bit since I just wrote president, but I think it's okay because, you know, I tried playing around with like vice president, comma, president, but then it just looked kind of weird and confusing. I really enjoyed this experience and actually did feel like it helped me become a much better team player and leader. I hope this experience in my resume shows that my people skills are pretty good. Last item. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. This one is like a little bit of a scam. Okay, so yes, I was the wet lab lead and I was part of the teams that did these projects and won these medals. But I was honestly not a pivotal member of the exact team. I was way too focused on doing research projects, volunteering, and just like a million other things that I didn't put a lot of effort into these projects. I didn't lie about anything, of course, but I just wasn't super involved with the whole thing. 
TBH. Okay, so we finally got through it. So did you notice where the big but not so obvious mistake was? If you think you spotted it, pause the video and let me know in the comments below before I tell you. Okay, so it was that for the teaching assistant position, I wrote Toronto ON and April 2018 to September 2018. This is clearly just copy pasted from the entry right below it. Oh no. I think it wasn't so obvious, I hope, because it was on the margins, but if you did notice it, it's actually a pretty huge error, I think. Well, I hope this video was helpful for all of you. Stay tuned for the next video on how I transformed my not so great resume into this resume and the resume that got me my Goldman Sachs and Amazon internships.